Hello everyone, and a warm welcome back to our channel. It's always a pleasure having you here, and we are immensely grateful for your continued support. In our discussion today, we delve into an intriguing subject, the regrets a narcissist harbors about you. Take a moment to ponder over that. If you enjoy our content and find it valuable, we encourage you to subscribe. So, without further ado, let's dive into the heart of the matter. What exactly does a narcissist regret about you? Before we start unwinding the threads of this intricate topic, I'd like to make a clarification. Post-narcissistic relationship, it's a common misconception that the narcissist skips off into the moonlight, leading an enviable life brimming with happiness. This is far from accurate. It is important to remember that like you, the narcissist is also a human being. They too encounter hurdles, obstacles, and not everything is always rosy for them. No one on earth is exempt from life's ups and downs. You're likely more aware of this truth now, having experienced or currently enduring a narcissistic relationship. And it's a silver lining that you're gaining wisdom from our channel, a truly valuable asset. Transitioning to the aftermath of the relationship, say you were discarded, one of the most trying and difficult times in your life, perhaps a recent occurrence. If so, we extend our deepest sympathies to you. Persist on your journey, making progress each day, and continue to invest in personal growth. Realize that the relationship wasn't as it seemed. You weren't at fault, you were manipulated and exploited. Likely, the narcissist has moved on to another source of supply, say you were discarded. Rest assured, they had multiple options lined up. Not just one, but many sources, and their fuel tanks were brimming to the top. They were filled to the brim with anticipation, enthusiasm, vigor, possibly wealth, among other things. This is something we now comprehend. However, there is one thing the new supply lacks, the wisdom you're gaining. I myself didn't possess this wisdom until quite recently. Now, I do. I fully comprehend what it entails, but I also understand that the narcissist will harbor regrets about the relationship you were a part of. Just like you had to navigate through the aftermath of the narcissistic relationship. You had to comprehend what narcissism is, how it impacted you for the duration of the relationship. You were manipulated, you gave more than you received, you may have been a people pleaser. It's highly likely that you are an empath or possess a high degree of empathy. You were unwilling to give up on the relationship, perhaps because you were married to them, or in business with them, or trusted them, or gave them countless chances. You believed they would change. But they won't. All they do is change the mask they wear and move on to the next unsuspecting individual. Nevertheless, it is important to remember that you had to pick up the broken pieces and put yourself back together. In contrast, what did the narcissist do? Precisely, they swiftly moved on to another source of supply. By this point in time, especially if your relationship concluded a few years back, it's highly probable they have leaped onto numerous sources of supply. The crux of this observation is that narcissists will reflect on the past, and their gaze will fall upon you. Trust me on this, they will acknowledge, wow, not only did that person slip through my fingers, but my present source of supply. I want to clarify that I'm not referring to a spouse, partner, husband, wife, or any specific individual. I use the term source of supply because that's how narcissists perceive individuals as sources of supply, as opportunities to exploit. They would be thinking to themselves, wow, that person, referring to you, they are doing remarkably well right now. They are living their best life, and my goodness, I had it so good. And what did I do? I sabotaged the relationship like I do with all relationships, with business associates, family members, siblings, children, co-workers, neighbors, and others. This is the narcissistic modus operandi, and they are aware of it. But there will be tinges of regret lingering in their minds. At this point, you might be thinking, that's not accurate. Narcissists don't harbor any regrets. What are you implying? I would respectfully disagree. Despite their narcissistic traits, they are still human beings. They still process thoughts and emotions, much like you and I do. They live for the moment, not in the moment, as I pointed out in a few videos last week. They are primarily concerned about themselves. We are all aware of this. 
but they will still reflect on the past and compare different sources of supply. This is why it's paramount that you cut off all contact with these individuals. You must block them, distance yourself from all their associates and acquaintances. Gain knowledge. Use your experiences. These two, when combined, lead to wisdom. This wisdom will guide you towards the third phase of your life. This is a brief overview of what you must do after a narcissistic relationship. If this is the first video you're watching, take it slow. Healing takes time and it's a process. You will need to invest time and effort into understanding yourself. You will need to rise from the ashes, brush off the dust, maintain a journal, and possibly seek the help of a qualified therapist who is well-versed in narcissism, among other therapeutic aspects. They can be particularly helpful if they've personally experienced a narcissistic relationship. You will need to practice meditation, watch informative videos, spend time in solitude, and you might even find yourself self-isolating. Healing childhood traumas is another important aspect, but that's a topic for another video. So, what is it that a narcissist regrets the most about you? They will likely regret the boundless energy you possessed, the unwavering support you provided, the countless tasks you undertook for them. Be it cooking, cleaning, planning holidays, managing finances, enhancing their social standing, being their arm candy, lending an ear to their issues, or just being there for them, even when they were noticeably absent for you. It's vital to remember, in a narcissistic relationship, these contributions are largely one-sided. In simple terms, you were the one constantly giving, akin to the giving tree. You were selflessly giving, often to your detriment. Unbeknownst to you, after the initial euphoria wore off, after the declarations of love, after the business partnerships, after the financial loans, or after moving halfway across the globe for them, they knew they had you. It's important to note that narcissists invest the most in the early stages of a relationship. This is when they are intent on understanding you, figuring out your likes, dislikes, fears, and passions. They conduct their research, ask probing questions, and yet, remain vague about their own lives. This is why the relationship moves at a breakneck speed in the beginning. Their ultimate goal is to ensnare you in their web of manipulation, distrust, and dishonesty. They want you to exist in the fog of narcissistic confusion, where you're unsure of your own reality. You long to return to the blissful beginning, the euphoric stage. Indeed, along the journey, the narcissist will occasionally toss you breadcrumbs of false love, empathy, and hope. They will promise you a future together gaslight you, stonewall you, and give you the silent treatment. They will exhibit fits of rage, display poor behavior, ghost you, and much more during the devaluation stage. Reflecting on these experiences, you might realize, wow, I put up with so much. I tolerated a lot. But what did I do? I kept giving and giving to a fault. However, I lacked the wisdom then. I didn't realize what I was dealing with, which was narcissism. I wasn't educated about this in school. But remember, once you see the truth, you can't unsee it. You owe it to yourself to safeguard your well-being. Understanding what narcissism is and recognizing how it impacted you for a considerable period, this knowledge is your superpower. Progress is a forward motion, and once you've traversed the fiery ordeal and emerged from the ashes akin to a phoenix, you enter the third stage of your life, the fortified version of you. This is the stage where you establish firm boundaries, where you no longer accept poor behavior, where you extricate yourself from uncomfortable situations and environments. If you find yourself amidst a toxic conversation at the office water cooler, you now have the strength to remove yourself from it. You no longer wish to be a part of it, to listen to it, or to hear it. You're now focusing on yourself. The narcissist will regret losing this new, stronger you. They will also regret how you perhaps raised the children, managed the finances, or how you were always punctual. In essence, if you promised to be somewhere at 5, you would be there at 5. Let's flip the script for a moment. The narcissist's new source, or sources, of supply are often unlike you. They are typically not empaths, they are not individuals who give selflessly or keep their word. Often, Narcissists end up with other narcissists or other individuals with certain clinical characteristics, which I will refrain from mentioning. The world is full of different types of people. 
When the narcissist discovered you, and I mean discovered, they hit the jackpot. You were the hidden gem. The issue was, you didn't recognize your own worth then, but you certainly do now. The narcissist has always been aware of your value, that's why they sought a relationship with you. That's why they led you on, made false promises about the future, and perhaps made you fall in love with them, even though they were incapable of reciprocating that love. They knew what they had in you. And trust me, when they are covertly stalking you on social media or using third parties to spy on you, a common occurrence, they realize what they've lost. I'm not saying this to upset you or to make you long for a hoovering attempt from the narcissist. You should not want to be hoovered back into their life, as I've mentioned before. You should be blocking these individuals and anyone connected to them. If you can limit your exposure on social media, I would also recommend doing so. But let's take a moment to clarify, what exactly is a flying monkey? For those new to the channel, a flying monkey is essentially a person unwittingly manipulated by the narcissist. Sometimes they might be aware of their role, but most often, they are oblivious. They may spy on you, gather information about you, your appearance, your well-being, your romantic interests, your job, essentially everything about you, and report back to the narcissist. Why do they do this? Firstly, these individuals often lack a fulfilling life of their own. Secondly, they have a propensity for gossip. These are the kind of people who, truthfully, lack a strong core themselves. They could potentially be the next target for the narcissist, because, let's face it, everyone close to a narcissist is a potential target. Nobody is safe, not a single individual, whether you've known the narcissist for a day or for over 20 years. You are not immune, and you understand what I'm talking about. Think about the course of your relationship. And now, I'm addressing the flying monkeys, wherever you are. Reflect on the person you suspect could be a narcissist. Have you witnessed poor behavior from them over the years? Of course, you have. But you chose to ignore it, didn't you? Indeed, you did. Why? Because you excused their behavior, you let them off the hook. But believe me, you too could be targeted just as easily. So, considering all these factors, what will the narcissist regret about you the most? They will regret a multitude of things, but right at this moment, as I'm creating this video, they could be reminiscing and thinking to themselves, wow, that one was not just the one who slipped away, but I'm really struggling for supply, and I will never find anyone like them. But what am I supposed to do now? Ah, uh, I'll have to firmly affix my mask and dig deep into my repertoire of manipulative tactics to ensnare another unsuspecting source of supply. I can only hope they are even a fraction as good as you were the person watching this video. And I know, deep down, they most likely won't be because the person watching this video, which is you, you were the best thing they ever had. They know it, you know it, I know it, and people all around you know it. This is a common occurrence, so ponder over this. Let's take a step back. When the relationship ends, often what you need to do is heal. You need to process your experiences, you need to retreat into your cocoon of boundaries and understand what happened. That's what you do. That's why you're here on this channel. The narcissist, on the other hand, does nothing of the sort, they simply move on to the next source of supply. The work that you have undertaken in the past, or the work you are currently doing, will yield immense benefits in the future as it enables you to learn more about yourself. Unlike the narcissist, you don't wear a mask to manipulate others. Instead, you're setting boundaries and narrowing your social circle. You're recognizing who was genuinely there for you in the past, which was likely very few people, if any, and who you want to include in your social circle moving forward. The narcissist doesn't engage in this kind of self-reflection. They lead a life filled with regret, despair, and fear. You might ask, fear of what? Well, I dedicated an entire series to this topic about a year and a half ago, which I encourage you to check out. But to summarize, they fear abandonment, exposure, loneliness, people discovering their true selves, a lack of supply sources, and aging. The sight of an aging narcissist losing their charm is not pleasant. There are many things they fear. Consider this, each day, the narcissist wakes up and firmly attaches their mask, 
preparing to face unsuspecting individuals or those who have no choice but to tolerate their poor behavior, such as their children or current spouse. Every day, they are on a relentless pursuit for new supply, for the perfect person, who, as we both know, doesn't exist. They don't realize this, which is precisely why they hop from one relationship to another, from one business to another, from town to town, city to city, country to country, leaving a trail of destruction behind them. Over time, these relationships cease to serve the narcissist's needs. They grow disillusioned and bored, compelling them to seek new sources of supply. However, what the narcissist will regret the most about you is precisely who you are and what you brought to the relationship, your honor, your dignity, your integrity, your bravery, your strength, your resilience, and your empathy. These are all wonderful qualities that not everyone possesses. Remember, you might have believed in the past that most people think or behave the way you do, they don't. It's important to note that this doesn't suggest that everyone else lacks good qualities. My hope is that everyone possesses some positive traits. My other hope is that you recognize your own worth, because you are worth far more than what the narcissist led you to believe. Post-narcissistic relationship, I hope you're discovering or have already discovered your true self and your value is soaring. You are an abundant, radiant beacon of light. I know it, you know it, the narcissist knows it, and guess what? They regret how they treated you. They regret their poor behavior and all the turmoil they caused. Will they admit this to you? Absolutely not. Will they act as though nothing happened? Most likely, will they confess their regrets to anyone? In other words, will they ever say, yes, I really regret what I did? No, they won't. But when they retire for the night, when they're alone with their hollow, empty, and chaotic minds, when they remove their mask for a few hours and are left alone with their true selves, that's all the affirmation you need. When you retire for the night, you do so knowing that throughout the day, you did your utmost to contribute positively to this world we call Earth. You're creating, you're building, you're growing, you're learning, and you're becoming educated. The narcissist, on the other hand, isn't engaged in any of these activities. Instead, they are busy maintaining a facade, pretending to be more significant than they truly are, and hoping others buy into their narrative. Most people do, until they get too close and understand the narcissist's true nature, which is nothing more than insecurity, bullying, cowardice, and stonewalling their way through life like a bull in a china shop. However, with time, everyone reveals their true selves. Narcissists can't wear their masks indefinitely. It becomes increasingly burdensome in each relationship, and more so as they age. Remember, as narcissists grow older, they wage a feudal battle against the inevitable march of time. It's a battle none of us can win. The difference is that you age gracefully, striving to live your best life, and appreciating every additional day you get to spend on this planet. The narcissist, however, tries to defy time, perhaps even attempting to appear a generation or two younger than they actually are. That's their choice to make, not mine to judge. So, what will the narcissist regret about you? They'll regret a lot of things. Interestingly, they'll also regret that many people are aware of their true nature. Trust me on this. Now, do these people know the term narcissist? Perhaps not, although by now, they might. But do they know to steer clear of the narcissist, to keep them at arm's length? Yes, they do. Do they recognize the wonderful qualities you possessed when you were with the narcissist? Absolutely. Will they admit it? Maybe, maybe not. But most people are observant. They may initially listen to the narcissist's narrative, but as time passes, they notice the cracks in the facade, they witness the mask slipping. They may even observe the narcissist discarding other sources of supply. The narcissist's friends start to question, what's happening here? That's your third marriage, and yet again, it's the other person's fault. What's going on? They begin to see the truth. So, the narcissist will indeed regret many things, and their number one regret will likely be the end of the relationship when they discarded you, if that's what happened. They have to live with that for the rest of their lives. Because while you have managed to pick up the pieces, heal and move on, they are stuck in their narrow minds, replaying the same narrative over and over again. 
Folks, that concludes the video. I hope you found it insightful. I absolutely enjoyed creating it. I encourage you to stay authentic, stay blessed, continue to awaken and become more aware, and remember that you are the priority. You should always put yourself first, second, and third. Now, some might argue, well, the narcissist isn't going to regret anything. That's okay, everyone is entitled to their own perspectives. However, it's important to remember that they are human beings too, they experience emotions and struggles, just like you do. Consider this, there exists a profound energetic bond with the narcissist, something you're likely aware of by now. This connection operates on several different levels. It's not like an average relationship that simply fizzled out. Now, when you reflect on the relationship years later, maybe even decades later, every so often, you might find yourself ruminating. You might think, did I truly endure all of that? Yes, you did. Now, think about the narcissist as well. They too have the capacity to ruminate. They too have their own thoughts, and rest assured, they are constantly comparing their sources of fuel. So, yes, they will experience regrets. No matter where you are in the world, remember, you are not alone. I send my blessings to you all. I love you, and I look forward to our next discussion. Until then, take care. Bye.